Mic off. Mike turned his mic off. So, great start, yes. And I exited my presentation too. This is going great. Sweet. All right, just gonna list out some games real quick. Uh, figure out what we're gonna do today. So, maybe karaoke, anyone? No, okay. Uh, we're gonna go into global thermonuclear templates. Uh, we got an update. Um, while that's updating, uh, global thermonuclear templates is basically just gonna be like a game engine uh, tutorial type thing to be able to teach you a little bit about schematics. All right, good, I think that's done. Nice, new one. Okay, new version's up. Okay. So, um, we can play, we have rules and we have tutorial. We'll start with the rules. So the objective of global thermonuclear templates is to teach players how to customize the output of the Angular CLI's generate command. So the Angular CLI has a generate command, but maybe you don't exactly like all the stuff that we've handed you out of the box. We're not offended, it's fine, you can or change it around to output what you want, and we're gonna learn how to do that. In order to do that, we're gonna go over a few terms. The first one is a collection. A collection is just a group of schematics. It's great. What's a schematic? Good. A schematic is logic to be able to execute rules. Super. What's a rule? A rule is a transformation of a tree, right, a tree. But what's a tree? A tree is a virtual file system that's gonna allow you to interact with your local file system, but in a virtual manner so that you can do a lot of different operations virtually without affecting the files um, on your file system until you decide that you actually wanna commit them and basically complete the operation synchronizing back to the actual physical disk instead of, um, in the middle, maybe get into a messed up state. This way it's a fully like a database transaction type situation that you can commit or roll back in the middle of. The last one is a source. And what a source is, it's a method of bringing external files into your tree. Okay, so a tree gives you the ability to do a bunch of different things out of the box. You can create files. So a tree, you'll have an object and you'll have access to that and you can create objects or files with that. You can overwrite files. So if a file's there, you can test to see if it exists, and if you want, you can overwrite that. Reading files. Sometimes it's in, uh, helpful to be able to read the content of an existing file to say, hey, I need to do some sort of operation or change to this file, so I'm gonna read the content, make some modifications to it, and then overwrite that file. Again, with overwrite, you can check to see if a file exists to be able to determine whether or not you wanna overwrite it if it exists. Deleting a file. Sometimes you want to write a schematic that is going to delete a file because of whatever rules that you may have or you want to execute. Now, now remove everything. Also renaming. So maybe uh, some conventions have changed and you want to rename files. Basically functions like a move operation. And to get you started, uh, schematics provide some built-in rules to be able to allow you to create your custom rules more easily. Template. A uh, template is, uh, gives you the ability to render a file that you've already created on disk uh, using an e EJS uh, language templating structure to be able to replace things within there to take your blueprint, modify it with uh, whatever options that you have, and output it. Chaining is the ability to take multiple rules and processing them in order. So basically taking a group of things and processing them as one uh, in a sequential order. Filter um, it gives you the ability to exclude files when you're processing. So for example, in the Angular CLIs, or in the default schematics, if you specify that you don't want to test file, if that flag is true, you can filter out a given file based off of some sort of convention based off of a predicate function. Branching and merging. Uh, this is uh, one that's a little bit harder to get your head around, um, but it functions a lot like a git branch in that it allows you to section off, do some processing, and then merge it back so that you can work with just a section of a tree at a time. Schematic is a rule for schematics to run another schematic. So <laughs> schematics, the nice thing about schematics is that they are composable. So if you write a generic schematic or something that you need to reuse, then you can call that schematic from another one. For example, the creating a new application with the Angular or with the ng-new schematic 
uses the component schematic internally to render a component. This way you can reuse and then creating of a component is consistent uh, no matter where you are. External schematic, same thing as a, as a schematic, uh, except for it goes outside of your collection. If you want to process a schematic that is not necessarily part of your collection, that you want to override some functionality to, or just execute to be able to get that output as part of your schematic, it gives you that ability as well. So it's not just internal uh, for the composability, it's also external. So let's take a look at the uh, tutorial in order to get set up in order to do this. Two steps. First step, npm install globally the at angular dash dev kit slash schematic CLI. There's a dash there too, but you can read that. Um, and what that is gonna provide you is the ability to run a schematics command. Um, and the schematics is a relatively bare bone um, CLI to be able to scale up uh, new schematics projects. In order to scale up a new schematics project, run the schematics command, telling it what schematic you wish to run. In this case, in this case the default collection is already assumed. Uh, for reference, that is at schematics slash schematics but fortunately you don't have to type schematics three times there, and you're gonna render the blank schematic. Uh, the blank one is just a empty project with a starter schematic already there for you based off of the name. In this case, uh, tutorial is the one that I just typed here. So tutorial is the name of the schematic, so if you wanted to create one based off of your company name, uh, you can do that. All right, so an overview of what we're gonna go over today. We're gonna write a schematic to create a file. We're gonna write another one to create files with a template. We're gonna extend an existing schematic. And we're also gonna use these custom schematics inside of the Angular CLI. So, let's get started. So, exit. Code. I've put those same objectives here. Hopefully everybody can see that. If you can't, I am sorry. We'll, we'll bump it up a little bit more. Uh, user settings, sorry. And we're gonna go to 1.8. A Little bit bigger, all right. So out of the box, and I'm gonna actually start here. Overview. So we have a collection that it's created for us. This is the definition of our collection, of which we have in our schematics a single schematic. And that has a description to say what is, a um, uh, little text to say what the schematic is doing, and a factory of, hey, what do I process when you run the schematic? So we go into the play down, playground directory, the index file, and it's gonna run something called playground. So we're gonna go back into that file and we see here we have a function that we're exporting called playground. So when the schematics engine runs, it finds that collection information and um, will run this particular schematic. So what we're gonna do is we are going to use our tree object that we have here and we are going to create a file. As we saw, we have the create method and we're gonna create a file called hello. You see the IntelliSense say, hey, we need the path of where it's gonna go and then we need some content. So we're gonna say hello ngconf. We can come down here and we can run that. We have to run an MP, npm run build. And then using the schematic CLI, we can run schematics. And here we want to run the playground schematic, although we need to specify the collection is in this directory, colon, the name of the schematic. So the convention there is collection name, colon, schematic name. So the collection dot just says, hey, it's in this folder. Uh, so we run the schematic uh, against this one. This one is called playground, and there are no options, so we can run that. Schematic, hey, that's schematics. Spelling matters on the command line, in case you didn't know. And it does not work. We are off to a great start today. We're running script, blah, 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 schematics. Schema already exists. All right, then we will not run it that way. RMRF, no, 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 we're not gonna do that. All right, fine. So instead of running it that way, let's do this. Index, and let's go to a spec, and let's create a test to actually test for this. So what this is, it gives you a spec file to be able to run your uh, schematic to be able to evaluate it. So we're gonna describe the playground. We know where the collection is. 
Uh, we're gonna run, this is just an arbitrary name, and the schematic we wanna run is playground. And we're gonna get a tree back from that. And it's checking here to say, hey, is the files an empty array? So let's run npm test. And that should fail because, hey, we've actually created a file now. So we can say, hey, we can say that we expect the files to have a length of one. Save that and we can rerun this test. Perfect, so now we can say, hey, our tests are running successfully and we know that we've done that. So let's check to see, all right, let's get, sorry, start here, we're gonna get the content of that file. And the content of the file is gonna come from tree.readContent. Uh, just a word of uh, information here, read content does not exist on the tree object, so when you're running, um, writing your actual schematic, you do not have access to read content. It is just a helper method to simplify reading from a um, tree to make your test writing a little bit easier. Um, as you can see here, it returns a buffer, so you have to then get the buffer, check to see if it's null, and it just simplifies the process when writing tests. All right, we do not want that information there. Come back, go back to our test and say, all right, we need to read a file out. We're gonna read the file, hello. And then we expect the content dot to equal. And here we're just gonna make sure that our test is running again. As that test is running, I'm gonna fix the test just to save a little bit of time. Save that, see that it's not working, and then we see that our test is working. No, no, please, please, don't clap. Um, all right. So, thank you. Uh, next up, so we want to be able to create files with a template. So, we're just gonna back this out. We're not gonna do that. And before I forget, because I always forget to do this, we you fix the test, because otherwise tests break in. I always forget to do that. So, in order to render a component, we are actually not gonna need the tree directly in order to do that. So in here, I created a snippet already. So I'm going to just need to say, hey, we brought in some additional references here. I'm gonna use apply from here. I'm gonna type these by hand because it's faster. Template is next, alphabetically, and then URL. And then options is here. We're actually not gonna use options. Um, and then we wanna render that here. Either for, okay. So then we also need to run this out and I'm just gonna get this ready and then I'll explain exactly what's going on here. And we're going to GDT merge with, there we go, and we got another file that we need to bring in here, merge with, perfect. So what we wanna do is render out some files from a URL. So we want to apply, which is gonna return us a source, but in order to get things in there, we're going to go to a URL and get some files where that URL is, everything under the files directory. So let's go ahead and create that files directory. Not with a slash in front. So now we have a files directory. So it's gonna go into that, or that directory, find all the files within there, and then apply the template uh, rule to that. So let's create a file within here, and we'll just call this hello, because that's what we had before, and we're gonna, uh, could have left the same task. Anyway, um, so in here we can render out some sort of options, in which case I am going to use the syntax to be able to render out a message, and there we go, and you can put our ancillary text around that as well, so hello, colon, and then some sort of message. And this is a property that's gonna need to exist on the object that you're passing in. So, we're gonna come in here and we, this needs to be template source, that's why. Perfect, okay, so in here we have, we're passing in options, but we're not getting anything on there. So what we can do is we can extend this options, put that in here, and then we wanna have a, stop it, a message, and here we're gonna go back and we're, mgconf, anybody been to that one? I've heard, I've heard really good things. No, nobody? So we're gonna render a message of ngconf into that file when we process that template. So we can go back here and we're going to run that test again. So we're gonna get the content again. So we're gonna put the same stuff back, put content back here. We know that that isn't going to match initially when we run our test because we added the different message at the beginning. 
It doesn't like me at all. So I'm going to declare, but it's fine, you're not used. Yeah, I took those out, sorry. So the rules are a little bit strict with linting, but we'll get by them. Okay. Have a slash there? Okay, so now we see our test is failing because we didn't have the ancillary message at the beginning. And we can, the test is failing, people. That's not a good thing. All right. There were, there were some testing um, talks this week. You could have gone to those. Thank you. All right, so now we have that he within here. So we can go and, and let's actually just create another schematic. So we're gonna create another one and this is gonna be something called Playground 2. That's too, in, that's too close. Let's create another one called Shy Sandbox, thank you. So Shy, stop saying your name. Uh, so in here, we're gonna create that one inside of here called Sandbox and index and sandbox. So I'm going to super cheat. I'm gonna copy that and we're gonna call this sandbox. We're gonna get rid of the files because we're not gonna render any new files within here. We're just gonna delete that. Super index. We're gonna come in here and we're gonna change this one around to say all right, we want to run a schematic. So we're going to actually chain a couple operations in here. So here we're going to chain, which we're, again, we're gonna combine some things within here. And we're gonna run a schematic. We wanna run our playground schematic. And let's bring that in here as a reference. Playground. And it takes options as well. Um, of which, remember that we need to pass in a message, so we're not actually gonna pass options. We're gonna say, hey, you know what? Oh, I hard-coded that in there, didn't I? Ha <laughs> we're good. Shh, no hard-coding, that's bad. Okay, and then from within here, we're just extending that chain, and we're gonna return this out. So clean that out. Hey, we haven't brought in chain yet, so. And I'm not actually chaining anything here, just running that. It's gonna complain because we're not using merge whip, we're using schematic, we're not using, what? Hey, there's a comma there. There needs a comma there. We're not templating, that's a comma, oh, really a comma that gets deployed? Okay, things happen, okay. So in here we should be able to run this. Apply. apply, thank you. Hey, that green underline, look at that. I'm getting applause for listening, this is great. All right, so now we can run our test and we're gonna hopefully see that that's still working because it should get the same exact result out and the test should still work because all we're doing is an extended the other one. And then from within here, and my time's just about up so I'm not gonna modify it anymore. Uh, oops, sorry, inside of the sandbox one, you can chain that and you can filter, you can modify the tree that's coming out of that to do other things. And this is all great, but let's run a build here. Hopefully this builds. It did build, all right, we're good there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch over to this CLI project. And inside here, I'm gonna run ng generate. And then, actually I need to install this, so I need to install dot dot slash playground, which is just, because the files are, or those two projects are in the same directory. So we're inside this CLI project, I'm installing the playground that I had just played with. It's just a local install, you can see that in the package.json. Uh, here, it's just a local piece here. So from there, since I now have reference to that, I can run ng generate, and I am running the playground schematic. And here I'm gonna run the sandbox, or excuse me, the playground collection, and the sandbox uh, schematic within there, and I'll see here that it's actually gonna generate. No, it's not. Things happened, accidents were made. Cannot resolve the factory. Hash? Other project, back here? Yes, thank you. So in here, sandbox, sandbox, good? Looking good? I'll build it again. There's loud banging, if anybody could hear it. It sounds like a drum roll, but not really, like a really sad drum. And we can see that we create the file. So, the 
piece I wanna leave you guys with is that while these examples are smaller, I said those things. Okay, so the thing with uh, schematics and all of these templates, with basic examples to get you started, but the ceiling is really way high. Um, things to know is that ng update from the CLI is purely running schematics. And when you update it, it's, there are more complicated rules, and you can create your own more complicated rules to be able to do things as complicated as ng update to update a library. ng add uses schematics to be able to do that. Um, and that's, there's a lot of different things you can do there. It's asynchronous as well, so if you wanna store files externally for your templates, you can do that and pull those in and render those that way. There's quite a few things you can do. My name is Mike, you can find me at App Rocco. I will take the repo that I created here and I will push it to that uh, repository which exists but has nothing there at this point because uh, I haven't committed and pushed yet. Um, thank you to uh, Hans Larsen uh, for creating the schematics library that all this is built on top of. <laughs> and that's all I have for you today. Thank you very much. <laughs>